that I need a mentor in this situation, man. I want to open a hair school. I've been wanting to open a hair school since I was in my first 300 hours in cosmetology school. So when I knew that I wanted to do this, I went on this journey in 2010, which is before Naha, where I actually wrote down, I put it on paper. Again, I mentioned it earlier. I said, man, Lord, I, I need help. You know, I was in the midst of already in the process, got the financing, was going after my building, was working on my catalog, was doing my LLC, was doing my bond. And I was just getting, but I was like, man, I needed help. I needed some guidance. And literally Chin's ad, which all of y'all seen his ads before, because that's why you're here. But one of his ads pops up and is like, do you need help getting funded and, and accredited and all this stuff? And you want to open up a hair school or a barber school? I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, it was one of those things. So I just felt in my spirit right away to to, to get into his blueprint. And as I got into the blueprint, I realized how legit it was because some of the stuff I already did, you know, I was already actively working in it. So I already had a business plan, but mine was like not as legit as his. So I was able to take my not legit and put it into him. And then we were too legit to quit. So it was awesome. So this unbelievable blueprint to become a school owner is setting me up to win. Now, I don't have to recreate the wheel because I have chin, right? So he's talking about giving and sowing seed and, and all this stuff. And man, I'll tell you right now, I text him right away. I said, I don't know who this is, but if you could get let the main man know that this is a blessing to me. Yeah, I just saw it in the comments, a blessing. Absolutely. And this is a blessing. I believe that this is a divine intervention from God that I'm supposed to be hearing this information and getting teamed up with you. And um, Chin texted me back saying, yeah, man, it's me. And I just couldn't believe that something that seemed so big was so tangible. And so he he hollers at me. We call, get on the phone the next day. And the next, time, next thing we know, I was a gold member <laughs> because... I just believe so much in having coaches, you know, picking up those clues that are left behind, doubling down on yourself so that you can ultimately hit your dream. Um, and which is for me, and I hope for all of you, if you're listening to this right now, you're you're either a cosmetologist or, or, or a barber or a nail tech in the beauty industry. And it's time for you to level up. It's time for you to get yourself a coach, uh, no matter what program, if it's if it's blueprint, if it's bronze or if it's gold, you know what I mean? You just got to get in there. So right when we started rolling, man, I, I get this fresh breath of air. I got this coach now. I get with my team. We're all huddled around. And um, I'm like, I believe that the Lord has put this guy in front of me. And my team is mixed with all kinds of people. And they're like, whoa, that's crazy. This million dollar barber. So we start rolling. We start getting all his information and start implementing it right away. So I have my girl that she goes through and, and reads it all, make sure everything's legit. And let me just tell you, you know, it's legit because look, NACUS, man, I, I'm learning about NACUS because of Chin. If you're a guy like me whose school is not even open yet and I'm in the, the beginning stages of the process, I couldn't do it without Chin. It's unbelievable. You got to do it right. Now, that's Tyler, Tyler James. And I'm going to share something with you all about Tyler. OK, this is Tyler James. So you see that him talking now? Guess what? He has his school. He's getting it ready. We, we, we can look at some of this. Let, let's check this out. Social Citizen Academy. Um, this is him getting it together. Everything's coming together. This place was like a a rat hole. He painted it. He 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 was always updating me, getting everything together. I mean, getting the walls up. I mean, you you can see everything coming together in his school. 
and we'll go to his page, Social Citizen Academy. Let's go to the uh, Barber page. Let's do some investigating. Let's do some research. We, we can go all the way down to the bottom. That first video that y'all saw, he was working at his salon. He just had a dream to open the school. That, that That's all he had was a dream. I mean, him right here. Hey, it really feels like a school for the first time. That's when the school was coming together even more. But it started with a dream and him believing. He has his own product line. If y'all want your own product line, we're going to help you with that. Look, just like Paul Mitchell. You know how they got the black and white bottles? Paul Mitchell started with $700 in the trunk of his car. It does not matter how you start. You don't have to be great to get started, but you got to get started in order to be great. So doesn't matter where you starting. Yeah, he got a nice school. My school was nowhere near that. It was a hole in the wall, but it does not matter. Because once you get accredited, then you can be like the Paul Mitchells, the Vedas, the Empires. You, you have so much money, you, your school can be state of the art. So I just wanted to share that with you so you can see how far Tyler James has come. Cynthia was a nail tech working in a little salon suite. She told me she was making about $25 to $45 per service. She was crammed up in it. Um, she used to work at the post office, but she had a lot of different surgeries, and they told her if she didn't retire that uh, if she had another injury, she was going to get be paralyzed. So she had to retire early sitting at home, but she loved doing nails and people would always ask who did her nails and she'd say herself, her husband, E.E. E. Kane, went behind her back and started contacting nail schools. And all these nail schools started calling Cynthia, calling on the phone, you know, trying to get her to join. And she was wondering why, not knowing her husband had called all these people. Long story short, Cynthia went to nail school and was helping out doing all that. And I saw her work on Instagram, just like I saw Mary Negron. I met her during the pandemic. And I reached out to Cynthia. I said, you have a God-given talent. You need to have a school. She didn't know me. I didn't know her. I just recognize talent when I see it. Well, do you know that she investigated? She told me she went to my Instagram, my Facebook, my YouTube. She found out I'd been to prison. She said, oh, well, my brother had been in prison about 25 years. She tells that story how she helped get him out with her being a school owner. The judge, they respected her being a school owner. And she was able to provide, told him she could provide a job, housing, and all that. That's how her brother got out. Well, Cynthia did all her research, and she joined the program. Because I expect all of y'all to in inspect what you expect on anybody's program out there. She sat on the program for about a year. Didn't tell nobody, didn't do nothing. She was just doing her studying. Opened up her school. She's very successful. Here's Cynthia Kane. What does she have to say? Me, I am Miss Cynthia, AKA Stay Ready Nail Studio, AKA Stay Ready Nails Academy. I am the first African-American female to have an all nail school in the largest county in Houston, Texas, which is Harris County. I'm accepting applications to be a manicurist, to be a advanced manicurist, and also to be a student instructor. And I'm here to share some information with you guys that you do not want to miss out on. So get your paper and pen and just get ready to get this knowledge. You want to make sure that you are following, of course, me on my page, which is Stay Ready Nail Studio with an S. Stay Ready Nails Studio, and of course, Chen. Now, I am in Chen's gold membership program. That means that I don't have to stress and have nervous breakdowns like I almost had a few times because I have them on speed out. There's no greater feeling ever than to have peace of mind. 
If you don't have peace of mind, this ain't for you. You cannot do this alone. I know everybody keeps saying this, but you cannot do this by yourself. If you try to do it by yourself, I'm trying to tell you from experience, going to have a nervous breakdown. You're going to want to start crying. You're going to be just like, forget it. You're going to close the school down because you're in it for the wrong reasons or you don't understand everything. You need somebody to help you. Me and that Barbara is the guy. Also, really quick, a lot of you guys always DM me when you see me come on Chen's Live or you know about me from this page and you ask me for information. You cannot skip over Chin to get information through me. Because you know why? I don't know. I don't know. You're going to have to ask Chin because that's the man with the, with, with the master plan. I don't know. So you cannot, you, 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 you can't skip over him to get to me. You got to go back to the drawing board, get with Chin, and he's going to show you everything you need to have a successful nail school like I do. How long did the process take you? The process didn't take me long at all because when I found this building, it was August 2019. So from August 2019 to November 2019, that was three months, three months of me reading the blueprint that I had, getting everything in order, ordering my supplies, ordering ordering my desk, calling, texting, chin. I was able to open in three months. Because I had him on speed dial. My experience uh, was when I found my building, I started to like, oh my God, what's next? And I had to think, wait a minute. I got the, the blueprint in my email. So I brought in a folding desk. I brought in a computer chair and opened up the blueprint and just start going down my checklist, getting all of the information I needed from Chen. So really quick, you guys think that find a building and you can just enroll students. That ain't how you, that ain't how it go. What we're doing, you have to be approved through the state, meaning that you have to have certain things in your contract to get students here. You have to have certain things in your contract to get that government funding. Like I said before, I looked just to see if it was out there and I'm good at Googling. Y'all, people call me the Google queen. I re- I reached out to Google trying to find out, let me see if this local. I mean, if it's, if it's on the internet, how to open a school, number one, I didn't find anything. Um, The contracts and stuff I'm going to need in my files, it's not online. So again, you're going to need government documents, legal documents that students have to sign in order to run a successful school. You just can't open a school and oh, do an enrollment and take photo shoots and oh, I'm a boss. No, you don't have your paperwork together. So that comes in the blueprint. It's on my website and it's on Shin's website. The website is something you're going to need by law when you get your um, application in with your state. On the application, it's going to ask you, what's your website? So if you don't have a website, you're going to be looking like, oh, they need to know who you are. They need to know that you are serious. They need to know again what you offer. So you need a website. And my website was granted to me free by um, Grinding by Faith and the Real BB Judy. And of course, she managed my website, whatever I need done, which is complicated stuff. My son can't even do that stuff. Like I had to, you know, like, okay, Chin, take over. But thank God again, I was blessed with a $10,000 or more website, this straight funnel, you go on my website and you want a professional website. You don't want to have a school and say DM me. No, you want a website where your students can download their information, they license everything so you can print it out, make their folders, and then you'll be ready to go. I'm so grateful for my online academy because I was thinking about that today about having residual income because with the, with the virus and the pandemic, of course, you're not always guaranteed to have students. And I thank God again. I was like, man, thank God for that residual income. One of them is the online academy that Chen told me to, to have. He told me to record my videos. I record them sitting right here, gave them to Chen so he could make me an online academy so I can just go to sleep, wake up, and have students buy my online classes. And also with the state of Texas, I'm approved to have an online academy also that keep that money coming in. So you want to be able to have access to all of that stuff. I was so calm and relaxed because I had the online academy, which was my master classes making money that, Ch- that Chen built my funnels and stuff for that. There was money coming in. I was able to put students that was enrolled online so they can continue to learn, continue to get their hours, and I can continue to get my tuition. So when a lot of folks was closing down, crying, when they closed down nail shops, they closed me down too. But I was able to put my students online because I have a school and get my tuition paid so I can sit in my bed with my scarf on relaxing. Now, remember, if you're a nail tech or barber or whatever and they shut us down again, you can't do your clients online. Let me say that again. You can't do your clients online. You can't do their nails online and make money. But you can have a school and educate online and still make money during the pandemic. So that's why I was able to stay at home and chill and relax and not have a care in the world.
any potential school owners, I'm going to say this, and y'all know I got to keep it 100. You cannot expect God to bless you with financial aid. Just because it's available don't mean you're going to get it. You have to know somebody who has already done that. If you don't invest in yourself by purchasing the gold program, that's what I have. If you don't find the means to purchase the gold program so you can have a kid on speed dial like me, how can you expect the universe, how can you expect God to bless you with students that's going to come to you, give you their hard-earned money? How can you expect to get qualified for financial aid, for financial grants, for city and state money. You don't want to invest a dollar. You don't want to invest a thousand dollars. You don't want to invest $5,000 in your potential school, but you want other people to come to your school and give you their money. It doesn't work that way. It's going to work out if this is what you are meant to do. And you're doing it for the correct reason. You're going to also need help. Again, I didn't just go find a building because somebody else had a building. I contacted Chen because he already done it. He already had school. So when they when I contacted Chen and um, asked him how much he was, I didn't play around and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Googled Chen, looked him up in Google. So then he had a um, prison history. I'm like, okay, okay, fine. So I started going to YouTube where he kept saying, well, he kept all the other school owners. I looked at all of those school owners. I went to every last one of them, YouTube. I'm like, okay, I didn't DM, I didn't DM nobody asking for information. I just, I said, okay, yeah, check, 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 check. Did I reach back out to Chen? He has a proven track record. I'm like, okay, how much is it? I'm like, okay, thank you. I didn't have the money. Talked to my husband. He got the money for me. I paid Chen. That was it. Got the blueprint. The blueprint, again, it's not just a checklist like do this do that it's a checklist of what you need to do and government documents again you have to have a contract you have to have certain things i don't know how often i need to say that you have to have certain things things in your student's folder that's going to get you to accreditation. I ain't just have them sign here and say, you're going to pay me tuition. I had to have everything like government document. It's legal documents, I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to tell y'all the truth. Since I opened this school, this is the honest to God's truth. Since I opened this school, I only had like a little mini breakdown just recently because I was thinking about, oh my God, accreditation. And I'm like, wait a minute, let me stop all this stress. Let me ask Chen. I asked Chen, I'm like, look, I heard this. I heard that. I heard this, Chen. Chen, I heard this, what I'm going to do. He said, don't worry about it. Yeah, I do all that. I said, what? She said, don't worry about it. I, I got you. I told you, let's do this. I, I know what to do. You ain't there yet. Don't worry about it. So just stay quick. <sighs> My, they go to stress. So I'm trying to tell you, I'm not worried about nothing. All I know is in a few short months, I'll be on my way to accreditation. That's the first step. All them other steps. Again, I keep hearing, oh, it's a lot. Oh, girl, this a whole lot. Girl, you ain't gonna be able to do this. I'll be like, all right, all right, okay. You can tell when someone is stressed out, right? Overwhelmed. I'm not. My glow is from my vitamins and not, that's on my website, and from not being stressed out. I'm not, I don't worry about anything. I just come in, teach. I have my son here to help me with the paperwork. I have Chin on speed dial, whatever I need. There was a lot of things that I wasn't doing in the beginning. I'm like, Chin, oh my God. Oh my, Chin, I wasn't doing is. He gave me the paperwork. I just was so busy enrolling. I was so busy teaching. I got behind. He said, don't worry about it, Cynthia. Like, it's okay. You're going to get your accreditation. Keep doing what you're doing. But just make sure from now on, you start doing this, 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 this. You're going to get your accreditation. You're going to get approved. Don't worry about it. Whenever somebody's in my ear, girl this, girl that, I'd be like, all right, whatever. She ain't going to handle out of that. So once again, this right here, this glow, is because I'm not stressed about anything. I'm not worried about anything. Whatever I have a question about, she ain't answer because I have the gold plan. And again, when you need, when I need to rest, when I feel like, okay, I need a break, I close the school down. I simply put them online. They agree. I just continue to get paid. You can't do that again, doing nails online. You can't do a client nail through the computer, but I can teach through the computer. So that's the difference. It's a whole nother level. But as an instructor, I know how to deal with it. And the other thing in, the, in behind the scene, which is the paperwork, the contracts, government documents, accreditation, that's Chen. Chen got that. So I don't have to worry about that. I just worry about teaching and educating here and everything that's running, it's, everything is running smoothly. In 12 months, I've already made okay. $200,000. And so I can credit, continue to flip money and continue to keep this school open. Okay. Now, that was Cynthia Stay Ready Nail Studio. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to her Instagram page. We're going to investigate her. She did a little investigating on me. So y'all, let's do some investigating on her. This is Cynthia. Look. 2015, her school jacket in her little room. Look at it. Just a nail tech. Been doing nails 13 years. Look at where she was. 
and we can go through her timeline and see how she progressed. Um, if we go back to the beginning, we will really see uh, her working in a salon, then um, her school being empty, uh, her finding the building, didn't have a sign or anything. And I want to take y'all, look, this is when she was teaching like one-on-ones. Yay, Chelsea. And you can see her getting equipment in now. She's sitting on the boxes. But we'll keep going so we can see when that building was empty. Because we always look at stuff right now, and we look at people right now where we got to go back to before they had that. Starting from, I like to start from ground zero. Let's see how it was before you got to where you were. Because we all have to start somewhere. So after that, we're going to keep moving forward because we're going to learn a lot today, a whole lot. Y'all going to learn everything from A to Z. This is when she got her sign. Showing this, this sign. Um, yeah, her sign is going to be up there. But that's what she was talking about. And she said she was jumping like a frog. She had signed a lease on her building. And it's not a gigantic building. I mean, that building is probably, I don't even know if it's a thousand, maybe a thousand square feet. It's not big at all. But we got to start somewhere. Look at your state board rules and regulations so you can see what the minimum square footage is. And whatever the minimum square footage is, I do the bare minimum. But we're going to talk about that uh, today. We're going to go through the rules and regulations. Okay, here's a school. Look, y'all. She set up her little portable table that kept collapsing and fell on her big toe. Nothing's in there. We all got to start somewhere. Now, she went from literally last place to she's known all over her and Mary and um, Chris above nail studio. This is the building. This is where her school is. This is the old picture right before they start moving stuff in. Closed my salon in 2019. Moved everything I had into my dining room. Look at that. See, we all got to start somewhere. If this don't inspire some of you all and motivate you all to move to the next level, look, this was 2019. Wasn't long ago. And y'all know where she is now. I don't even have to go down anymore. And she told y'all about her website. Um... And her online courses has all of that. Got her. Um, scroll on down. She has her own product line. They can take the nail quiz. We're going to go through all of that. All of y'all need to be recording step by step. Antonio, Raise Elite, Grinding by Faith, Candace, Clifton, Crystal, Daniel, Dewana, all of y'all, Edgar, Erica, Clarissa, Karen, Kay, Kanisha, Kim G, she already recorded, Kimberly, Kirk, Lisa, Matisse, Michelle Barnes, Miss Yolanda, Nevis, uh, Raquel, Rhonda, Shelly, Shonda, Tanetta, Victoria, Vivian, Yvette, Mike, everybody on here needs to be recording step by step. Take your phone, turn it sideways, whatever it is that you're an expert at. This is homework. Each and every one of y'all need to record it and put it on a free Thinkific account. We're going to talk about that too. And people will be able to click your link, pull out their credit card and pay. The money will go in your bank account and it'll automatically send them a username and password. Now you're making money without working. That's what she did. Online nail classes. All she did was turn the phone sideways. That's it. Talked about sanitation. $97 for that. Product knowledge. 
think about that. that. That's all she did. And each and every one of y'all, y'all should be selling information. Everybody on this live right now should be selling information, foundation and maintenance, the ombre and encapsulate. I don't know what that means. I don't even know how to spell that. I just know it's got something to do with nails. 197. She's getting paid for her knowledge. And some of y'all think, oh, ain't nobody going to pay you. Okay, ask Cynthia. Oh, ain't nobody going to pay you to learn how to do something. Ask Atlanta Hair Doctor. Ask Razor Chick. Ask Kim Kimmel. Ask all of these other people out here on social media that have taken a cell phone and a ring light and recorded. You don't need some big, fat movie camera. You don't need a movie production. You don't need to be editing and all that stuff. All you need is what you got right here. God has already given it to you. There are people that have made millions of dollars from this right here selling their information. Think about that. Oh, I'm too shy of the camera. So what? Don't nobody want to look at your face anyway. They want to look at your hands on their head or your hands on them nails doing the work. They ain't studying your face. Tell your daughter or husband whoever to have the phone centered on your hands. Think about that. It's time to go to the next level. Sell your information. Have your online academy. Y'all are gifted. There are people with less gifts, less talent, less resources, doing more than you. Moving on. So that's Cynthia of Stay Ready Nail Studio. And she has some of the classes online for her school. Because you got to have a physical location in order to be able to offer online training for your school where they get hours that lead to a certification. We're going to talk about that more too. All right. Now we'll go back to, I'm going to share this screen. Pause this recording. We got a lot of, um, we got a lot of people that have done big things. I mean, Hey, we got Mary Negron. Mary's on this live right now, y'all. Um, she was on here earlier. She may still be on here. Um, I saw her earlier, and this is Mary. Uh, Mary, I met her during the pandemic. She decided to open the school. She made her decision during the pandemic and um, what he was doing and just gave me a lot of guidance basically on how to do this. So I can honestly say the guidance helped me a whole lot. I wouldn't have been able to, I wouldn't even thought about it had I not been introduced to you guys, really, to be honest. I mean, doing it here right now during a pandemic, who does that? You can't, and you wouldn't believe how many people say that to me on a daily basis. They're like, so you open the school during a pandemic? The lady who from the state board who did my interviews, she asked the same question. She was like, okay, so you, you open a school during a pandemic. Bravo. <laughs> and I'm doing it. And my school is full. I mean, what can I say? I think when I first came across you, I wasn't really even thinking about necessarily the school per se, because I didn't start going to school for my instructor license until after I met you. I believe I first started following you because I was interested in the funnels and the click funnels and how I could selling my own products, have my own store. I remember when I first met Chin, he was like, what? Because my former salon's name was House of Bling, but it was spelled the German way, H-A-U-S, and he just was like, how you say that? What? What is a house of bling? What is that? I don't even know what that is, you know? And I learned so much, you know, rebrand. I rebranded myself through um, watching your videos and following Miss Cynthia and the things that she was doing and just totally got inspired to open a school. Before COVID happened, it was time for me to decide whether I wanted to renew or not. And I had several young ladies who wanted to come and work with me. And so I said, okay, let me get a bigger spot. So I got a bigger spot and then boom, COVID happened. It, it was a drain on me. It was, it was a lot of like, I got this place, I got all this space for these girls to work and nobody's coming to work. So I had to literally rethink my whole plan. The plan was I was just to do my school thing over in Africa and leave this alone. But after meeting with you and talking to you and all of those things and getting the information, which was a wealth of information, I learned so much just off of those um, videos about click funnels and it just naturally progressed to the school thing. I mean, I can I honestly can tell you I was not thinking about doing that here. It was not on my radar.
until recently. Well, with you, I've had great, I've had great experiences with you. Me and Chen have even done some some business outside of this before that was smooth sailing too. So Chen is a wealth of information. I mean, anytime I need to talk to him, he'll pick up the phone. And I'm not in his gold program because you know I'm one of those people that think I'm just so smart, you know, but um that I'll figure it out myself. But um I'm I'm getting there. You know, opening the school, that is the easy part. I mean, that's, I'm going to just be honest with you. If you've ever opened a salon, then you can open a school. I, I'm so grateful for the inspiration, for all of the help, for all of the well wishes, because this is a big deal. Like I said, is this is the first and only nail school in my city. And it's woman and minority owned. So I'm super excited. I can't, I, I can't even express to you how excited I am. If anybody has any other questions, I'll be and so um, what he was doing. That's and Mary uh, Negron. Now, this guy right here, I'm going to show y'all a couple of more people. This guy right here was my first graduate from my school back in 1998. Wake is Herford. So he knew me when I was like in my 20s, when I was like 24, 25 years old. And he was my first graduate. And I was so proud that he opened his school this year and I was able to interview him. I don't even know what Wakeys has to say about me because he knew me from 25 years ago. And we saw that and we, we took heed to that and we started doing the same thing. And we got that same respect he got now because we did that. And, and through the years, I've graduated over 200 students. Since July the 1st, I've, I've only had one person fail the state board out of 40. I mean, 40 and old, and that comes from the stuff I learned from back then about being a people person, about being a leader, and about meaning what you say and saying what you mean. All you got is your word, and you told us that, and we saw it coming in the permission in, in schools now, and that's why I get the respect I get in the industry, not because I'm the best fader, because they know I'm going to do everything I can to make sure they successful. Because I know some chin told a long time ago, I want everybody around me to eat. That way won't nobody ask for none of my food. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure everybody around me eat and eat good. That way you ain't got to ask for none of my food. You got your own food. And then you can get your, share your food with somebody else. And so that's the way I, I live my life. And that's the way I teach. That's a, and that came from that mentality, that teaching from along from that World Class University. And that came from that mentality of people want to be and being taught, you know, taught that the way I teach. And I, you know, I, I ain't got no shame to say that. I'm a bad boy when it comes to teaching. I'm a bad boy. And I mean that. And that came from this, that, that guy right there. And not because he taught the book, it's because he taught life. And my students love the way I teach because I teach life. I, I teach the book. I know the book. I can tell you what page number stuff is. But more importantly, I teach life. So when I meet a student, I treat them like a person, not like a student. I treat them like a human being. I want to know where you've been in. I want to know. I spend, I spend the first week about values and beliefs. That's my first week of school when you start with me. Because I want to know what you value. I want to know what you believe. And it, it, it ain't about, you know, trying to make you be a Christian or trying to make you follow God. No. It's about, I need to know who you are for me to teach you the right way. A lot of teachers, they don't care about the student, who they are, what they done been through. All they do is, uh, it's just a money. It's, some, it's another number. No, 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 no. You got to get to know who you teach. And the, the best way to know them is when you first meet them, tell them your story. And that's all I've been doing since I met you. Because that's all he did was tell his story. That's all he did for us would tell his story, and that's what I do now. I tell my story to my students. I let them know that I ain't, I ain't no big to them. I came from a slum just like they did, but look what I did. And I always share with them the person that showed me that, and look what they did. You know what I mean? I stayed chasing him, and I mean that, and I chase him in a bad way, but because I know if I was his first graduate from his school, then I need to be at a certain place because he who he is. Just imagine if the first, you know, if his first graduate from his school, the first person he taught, didn't do nothing with Bob. His story would be his big, but his story is even bigger because the first person graduated from his first school now has a school. It's major. That changed the whole story. That changed the whole story. So now his story is even bigger now. You know what? His story is bigger than even what it was. And I don't know if he know it now. But now his story is even bigger than what it was now. So now he got something else to add when he talk about himself. At the end of the day, not only and you know, not only did I get my own school, but the first person graduated from my school got a school. Then it took me, you know, 20 years, but I got it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be a real school owner, you got to love to teach and you got to love people. 
You know what I mean? You got to love being around people. You got to love to teach. Then when you go home in your private time, you might be a straight a-hole. I don't know. But while you in the public eye at this school, you got to be uncles. You got to be the uncle, the auntie, the brother, the sister, the mama, the daddy, the police, the judge, the wife. You got to be all that to these students because they need that. They need that. So, yeah, the mindset got to be, you got to be ready to be in control and be ready to put all your all in. Go in 100%, especially on the teaching part. Because anybody can get a school, but it take it take a real person to keep it. My tuition is $4,950. If you pay payments, which is monthly payments, you're going to pay $500 a month, which adds up, because I got a finance fee of $1,050. So it costs you six thousand if you pay monthly. It costs you forty nine fifty if you pay up front, and that's for my first twenty students on this first class. Then after that, I'll probably go up a little bit. I find students by promoting and going to events. So every hair show I'm at, every event I'm at, and I walk around like this all day with my barber uniform on. And you know what people ask me? Do you cut hair? Yeah. And guess what? I got a school too. For real? I walk around with this all day. I ain't too good to walk around my cape all day. So people can ask me, that's how I build my clientele, that's how I build my students, same way. So that was Wakeus um, Hartford. And he's a very, very special student. Um, he came to the school, his mama was on crack. She ended up getting clean. And him graduating from school, that was the first thing that he ever completed. The first thing. He, he never had completed anything in life. He had always quit. So it was very touching for me to see him graduate from school. So I'm going to keep on going because my, this guy right here, I'm not going to go deep. Mine had a seventh grade education. He has a school in Mississippi. I've been knowing him for years. And the next uh, person is false. This guy right and here, Barbara. Alan, and y'all can look at these on your spare time. I got hundreds of people on the YouTube. Alan, they he's from Ripley, Mississippi. And his mom opened the school back in the 1940s. It wasn't accredited. She passed it on to him. He was going to shut his school down. I met him at a conference, a school owners conference. And naturally, when you go to these conferences, there's not a lot of people there that look like you. So naturally, we all want to connect and lock in on each other. And he was telling me he was great, shut the school down, what no money in and all that type of stuff. And I told him, look, we have a program and you can get your school accredited. You can work with us and you're going to make a lot of money. It'll be worth it. So Alan did. Um, I'll let you hear and a little bit about My him. mother started back in 1945 with school. And I took over in 2008. And from 2008 to 2013, it was a struggle. But once I took your program and I started, you took me under your wing, I started seeing a whole lot of difference. And that's just real talk to anybody that want to know. When you started, you used to call me a lot, but now you don't call me that much. Oh, well, I still call you. You know we still going to be friends for life. And if anything, that if I, I have a problem right now, like I called you like a month ago. Yeah. In 2018 now, I called you a month ago. You still helped me out. So it's, a, it's always you. One thing I like about your program, it's a hands-on program. You are always accessible. You just a phone call away. If I have a problem, I can call you, and usually you will give me the answer because I know you have been through this. That was Alan Christmas. Um, I definitely wanted y'all to see him. Boss man. Boss man, he retired his wife, bought a Mercedes, bought himself a truck. He grew up in a probably about a 500 or 700 square foot home, little bitty house. And now, back when I was going to Bonner Brothers years ago, I used to have a school blueprint on a CD-ROM. We didn't have the digital stuff that we have now, how y'all can just click a button and downloads and all the videos. Everything was on a CD-ROM back in the day. And Boss Man took my class. But I want y'all to hear Boss Man. We were at the Bonner Brothers Hair Show when I ran into Boss Man. Here it is. I saw Boss Man years ago. Probably back in maybe 99 or 2000, it might be 20 years now. Uh, 
Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about his life and how he's grown to one of the biggest school owners of Sean. How's it going, Mr. Chen, man? Sean Boston, a.k.a. known as Boss Man, you know, uh, like, like you said, known as Journey since really 95, you know, my first time ever on the brothers, you know, Mr. Chen played on in, in the 90s and, you know, and just learned the game, learned the craft, you know, decided to, to get to the school business and, uh, I remember my, 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 my first school, and my wife put in that hard work to, to get the paperwork together, man. It's a good journey. We well worth it. And uh, the school owner now, four barbershops, and in the process now of, of uh, franchising my school now, you know what I'm saying? So we, we making sure that we can do the, the first school now as a, like an incubator school, just to make sure that everything is right before I start lunching up my transfer and paperwork, you know, so my life's been in five states now. Barber and instructor. I'm going to tra tra transition my barbershop from booth rent to commission uh, this March. We got a team coming in for the train me and, 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 and a few staff to transition that, man. And and, and, and that program will roll to the, the other schools. So I, I recruit them and I train them. I place them in all cost man, right? Everybody with them. Man, I'm, tell them how much your tuition is, boss, man. My tuition now is, is 17 you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if we can go up in this new school, because it's, it's in a, a bigger city, you know, so we're going to do about 20000 you know, try to stay competitive with the other schools, but at the same time, I'm bringing something different, you know, than what other schools are pretty much doing, you know, so, you know, I'm not, I never go on business to put nobody out of business. I go on business for business, so. When I come here and sit down, I'm trying to take the students from that. I'm, 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 I got my own little uh, plan to recruit. You know, I'm coming to business. I'm coming to your city for business. And that's the type of that out of business. And, uh, boss man, tell them the year that you opened your school. Man, October 2010. So, this should be 2010. I also been my wife going to do a, a class now on, on how to do your own school. Okay. Well, we can hear more. Uh, As well, because people want the information. But information ain't always free. I, I, I learned that from, from a man with a chin, so information ain't always free. So, All right, that was Boss Man. Um, he was from Louisiana, and he used to come to the Bronner Brothers hair shows years ago. I've been going to Bronner Brothers since 1998, and I would teach a class how to open a school, become a creator, and get government money, just like now. It would be live. And I had these CD rooms. Him and his wife would always come into classes. And they end up joining the program. This is years ago. And he's accredited now. Has a nice house. He retired his wife, as you heard. Bought her bins. Take care of his mom. She has dementia. Bought him a 2020 truck, 75000 I mean, he's done a lot. He gives back to the community. He helps a lot of these young people. I mean, you can follow him, boss man's barber college, but he's really impacting the community. Like I said earlier, with this school, y'all are going to impact a lot of people. It's going to be like a ministry. And to Kenya, I won't go deep into her, but to Kenya used to work at a prison. She was a, an officer. To Kenya's now accredited. She's down in, in Georgia. She went from being an officer in prison to um, $30, a year. Own a home I was making 30000 a year. So my checks at the prison. So I'm not going to go deep into that. We, we're going to move right along because we got a lot to cover. Glenn. I, I know my wife and I. This guy is in Texas. His tuition is 25000 This dude used to walk to school. Um, they've been in the program since probably 2010, 2012. You can hear a little bit of Glenn. Here, what we are doing, what we're doing, and blessed to be doing what we're doing, where we're going, had not been for you. Um, you know, we, we you, you did a lot of good things for me and my family that, you know, that I just don't want to put out there and people think, oh, no, but it's real, what you've done. I mean, we have students, when you came down to our school and, you know, and, and guided my wife and I and, and showed us the things that we should be doing, the things that we were doing wrong, the way you critiqued us, that's why we are where we are right now. I have to be very honest with you, you know, because again, you don't find people like yourself with the status that you have that's rendering their time. Because again, time is valuable. And you took the time out 
That was Glenn. So I wanted to share a little bit about him. He's doing very well. His tuition is 25,000 students. 25,000 per student. So he's doing really well. That's Steve Harvey's barber. Came by your um, he came by my school years ago. And this guy was getting $2,500 a haircut. This is Steve Harvey's barber. Yeah, this very nice school. I think he had some maybe like 400 students or something. So it was a really large school. Had a great interview. Uh, got a chance to meet you and uh, maybe one of your business partners or something, I think, uh, that, that was with Ms. you. Delma? And uh, what's her name? Ms. Delma. Ms. Delma? What's her name? Ms. Delma. Uh-huh. Met her and I like, say, uh, spoke to the students, man. It was, it was a great experience. And then um, about to be finished uh, talking with the students, like I say, we signed autographs and took pictures. And then I had a conversation with you once I was done. You said, hey, man. You ever thought about opening up a school? And I was like, you know what, man? I thought about that like years ago. And you, was, you said, uh, man, you should think about it. You see, you see how excited these students are that you're here and, and how you impacted their life. On this. I'm afraid that if you open up across the street, you'll shut me down. You know? <laughs> That's what <laughs> <Yeah>. we <laughs> so, <laughs> so We laughed about it. I was like, take it out of here with that. But it's not <laughs> serious, man. You should really think about it. And to be honest with you, I had thought about a way. Because, you know, I had been traveling for like almost 30 years with Steve at the time. And I, and I really wanted to go back to Texas and, you know, spend more time uh, with my family and, and, you know, with people and really do what I really love to do, which is be in the air business. And so I just didn't know how to get out. You know, I was in it. You know, I went from doing what I was doing there to traveling with Steve, making all this money. And plus, I lost all my clientele on the process. And so go back home to what? You know, I didn't really have any, any business to go home to. So I ended up having to um, figure it out. And when I met with you, you told me that, man, that's that's how I got out. So that was James Thomas. He was Steve Harvey's barber, and he did a well, lot. You know, um, that's Anthony. He has a school out there in Virginia doing really well. Oh, that's just a video with me. So that, that's nothing. This right here, that's me cutting hair. Believe it or not, I've been licensed for 32 years. I used to cut hair in the shop. At that point right there, I wanted to open a school. I was tired of working behind the chair. I was getting about 5 to $10 a haircut at that time. Um, I was working like crazy, working my butt off, making about $500 per week, working in the shop. I told people, I'm going to open a school. They thought I was crazy. They thought I was crazy. We're talking about 1998, 24 years ago. I mean, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I can make all the excuses. I can say, well, I'm an ex-convict. I've been to prison. I got out of prison. No money, no job, no driver's license, bad credit. Had to sleep at a halfway house. I don't know my biological dad. Single parent home mom raised me. My brother and sister grew up on food stamps, the paper food stamps. I'm a black man. I mean, I can make every excuse. I could. And it, it may be logical. I don't know. But there are no excuses. You, you got to dream in yourself. You, you got to believe in yourself. You got to think big. This is A&E yeah. that interviewed me. And I knew that they was probably going to give me a life sentence because I knew the amount of cocaine, what it was. That was the largest amount ever in Nashville at the time. Well, I told God to give me 10 years. And the judge, he said, you know what? I'm going to give you that boot camp. The boot camp, it was in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. This boot camp, they select 200 people a year out of 100,000. It wasn't for drug dealers. It was for white collar criminals. I was there for six and a half months. And we worked 17 hours a day, hard labor, every day. We worked in the fields, planting and working on a farm. From the day that I hit there, their goal was to break me. Now, that boot camp, I was there with white-collar criminals, guys that graduated from probably Harvard, Yale, Princeton. They worked on Wall Street, some of the brightest minds in the world. So when I came home November 15, 1995, my mindset had totally shifted. I got out, no job, no driver's license, no credit, no money. But you know what? I had a million dollar mindset. 
I save my money, live below my means. I'm cutting hair at the halfway house. And then I started cutting hair at a barbershop. I ended up buying a barbershop. Barbering changed my life. Had it not been for my barber license, they would have sent me back to prison. So I still had this goal to open up a barber styling school. Opening this barber school was more than just money. It was a way to give back, a way to pull someone else up and transform their life. When I was uh, around 20 years of age, I committed an armed robbery and uh, resulted into incarceration. During that time, I was actually able to find myself and uh, find my true gift. I came upon cutting hair, and it felt like when I cut hair, I was free. I wasn't locked up anymore. And I told myself, when I get out, that's what I want to do. He came to the school, and he was very gifted. I mean, this guy could do every design, every haircut. He could do everything. All he needed was a license. Chin blessed me with an opportunity I didn't think I would get. I didn't think anybody would understand my situation, especially in corporate America. So meeting Chin and being involved within his school, it was really a life changer for me. The best part has been seeing them able to earn an honest living, being able to buy a home, have their own business, having a sense of pride and ownership. So it's nothing greater than empowering somebody mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. There are borrowers all over who graduated from the school and now they're, they're not selling cocaine. They're not robbing, killing, stealing because they have a barber license. That's all I needed was a second chance. Sometimes all we need is one more chance, another opportunity. Now, we're going to go on the journey. I told you all how I grew up. Um, that's me, my brother and sister. That's me on my mom's lap. A little bit about myself. Grew up in poverty. Like I said, the big block of cheese, the government milk, uh, the powdered egg, powdered milk, all of that. That's how I grew up. My mama went to work. It was so early that it was dark outside. When she came home, it was so late, uh, Shonda, it was dark outside. I don't know if y'all know how it is to grow up when you see your mama struggle. You don't have a father. Never met them, uh, Dewana. Your grandmother passes, your granddaddy. Um, that's how I grew up. My grandma and granddaddy, they weren't together no more, but they lived in the same house. Back then, you didn't get a divorce. I slept in my granddad's room with him. My sister slept in the room with my grandmama. I didn't know that till I got grown. My granddaddy was a woman I was in a drunk, but that's how I grew up out North Nashville in the hood. That suit that I have on, my mom bought us one suit a year for Easter, and I wore that same suit every day, every, every Sunday to church. It never, never got clean, never went to the dry cleaners. And this table right here, I'll never forget that table down there, Clarissa, uh, Key, Kim G, uh, Matisse. My mama went to Goodwill, Mary, Michelle, and she bought that table and made an island. And uh, Yolanda, she put that cover over it, the green cover, Nivis. And Shannon, she put the little plastic over it. You know about that plastic, uh, Tanetta, Vivian, because in the living room, we all had that plastic on the furniture. So when people had them curls and it used to drip, we'd have to squirt their Windex and wipe it down when they would leave, Mike. But that's how I grew up. And uh, Rhonda, do you want to? If you see the living room to the far right, the wooden paneling, uh, Clifton, you remember when grandma and them had that wooden paneling and everybody's picture was on that crystal. That's how I grew up. And that stove down there, only one eye worked. One eye worked. And we ate a lot of oatmeal. You, you see that oatmeal down there, Nisa. But that's how I grew up. I'll go on to the next thing. It wasn't easy how I grew up. I mean, I, I'm not complaining, but you know what? God will bring you, he'll bring you through anything. He will bring you through anything. But that's how Kid. I grew up. I just wanted you all to kind of see that it hasn't always been like this, uh, Clifton. And, of course, I was a drug dealer, and I ended up going to prison, losing everything. I know y'all seen the A&E and the, the Vice TV, all of that stuff. I don't have to talk about that. Long story short, went to prison, 
my senior year in college, my sister went to prison. She didn't do anything, felt really bad, contemplated suicide. I was cutting half for three cents an hour at one prison, the one at the other prison uh, event. I was cutting half for three cents an hour. But it doesn't matter um, how you start. I know Takenya worked as an officer at a place and she was studying to open her school while she was working at the prison up in the tower with her rifle. She would be up there studying, thinking about her plan on opening the school, Shannon. So it doesn't matter how you start. Yeah, I was released from prison with nothing. No job, no driver's license, bad credit. I didn't have anything. My mama picked me up, but I had a barber license. That's why I'm so passionate. Y'all will see me break down sometimes, cry sometimes, just out of joy, just, just the, the feelings, because I don't know if you all, some of you all know how it feels, but I just wanted to share that with you all. And this picture right here, this is when I was working in the shop, cutting hair. I didn't like that. I was happy when I graduated from barber school and working in the shop because we go through these phases. You're in school, you want to be the best and show everybody up and all of that. Then you graduate, you want a lot of clients. There's more clients than you can handle. Just want to do hair, cut hair, all that, do nails. Then after that, you get tired. You don't have any time. All that Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, holidays, everybody wants you to do their hair and nails. They feel like they own you. Then you go through this phase, your body's tired, your neck, your, your arms start hurting, pain start going through your body, trigger finger, copper tunnel, your knees. You go through that. And then you go through a phase when you actually, some of us, I've talked to a lot of school owners, and I thought I was the only person. You go through a stage where some of us have gone through that stage where we start hating our job disliking our job, disliking our clients. I don't like to use words hate, but I got where I hated my job. I even hated some of the clients. I did. It was like I went into a depression and lost a lot of weight because I didn't like my job. I wanted to open that school. Some of y'all are there right now. Some of y'all are not there right now. Some of y'all are going to get to that point. Some of y'all may not even get to that point and still want to open a school. When I decided to do that, everybody said I was crazy. I ain't had no money. I didn't even know I was going to do it, but I knew what I wanted. I wanted that school. I didn't want to stay at that shop because I knew if I did not open the school, Rhonda, Shannon, if I didn't open that school, Alante, Clifton, Candace, I was going to die an old man behind that chair like Sister Sadie Howard, Gertrude McLean, and Odessa Watkins. So, Crystal, I knew that I had to do that. Do want to buy any means necessary? I had to do it. So I knew that I wanted to get that school. I had been to Bronner Brothers, cut hair. I had the booths. I mean, you can see that booth right there, Kurt. I rented that booth at Bronner Brothers. And you see the VHS tapes. I used to get the VHS tapes made and sell those, all of that. But nothing was fulfilling until I got that school. And I mean, the shop, I don't have to go in here. Long hours, you know the pain from head to toe. No time, you, you babysitting the people in the shop. You teach them stuff, then they leave. You tell them to clean up or do something, then they get mad at you. I mean, it's a lot in running the shop. You know, everybody says, oh, I got my own shop and all that. I'm going to pray for you. How you make money in the shop? Commission, booth rent, selling products or whatever, teaching some little classes. But that's going to soon play out with the school. There's a lot of perks that come with the school. You got free labor. Students don't get paid. Look, how many of y'all remember when y'all was in school? Put in the chat box, if you remember when you was in school and they worked you to death, am I the only person in school that when I was there, they had me on that clinic floor working me like a robot? How much money did y'all make that school on? Does any of y'all, I mean, type of yes, think about when we was in school. You know they make money. Even if they didn't have, if nobody paid tuition, they still made money from the clinic floor, from us Cutting, styling, coloring, doing hair all day long. That's like modern day slavery. Think about that. I mean, people, well, how am I going to survive without financial aid? If you got a school and you got students working all day, every day for free, and you're the only person getting paid, and you do your clients too and charge them full price, you will be able to handle the bills at that school. Start out small. Then you'll be able to get a credit three years later. Shannon, I did the last year both for my teacher while she talked. 
because the teacher couldn't even do it. Tuition. They, they can pay $50 a week, $100 a week. If they can't, we got TFC tuition that are finance their tuition or no pay, and we're going to get off into that. Clinic services, we already talked about that. Product sales. Every product that's sold, you get 100% of that money. To Kenya know that. Mary knows that. Mary got her own product line. Nivis, he knows that. Mr. Alvarez, he has a school out in Chicago, in Illinois. At a shop, you sell a product, they got to get a commission. The school, you get a commission, all right? 100% the school owner, 0% the student. So we know it makes money. The kits and books, we're going to talk about that, where to get those from. You get that wholesale, retail it to the students. Advanced classes, you close on Sunday, Monday, most schools. So guess what? Like Cynthia used to do, you could do advanced classes. Look, y'all, when I had my school, the only thing I could do was one thing, one thing, and that's it. Cut curly wavy kinky hair. And I wasn't the best at that. You all, all you got to know how to do is one thing. I would have, uh, let me go back. I want to show y'all this. I would have advanced classes, y'all. How you have an advanced class and you only know how to do one thing? How you going to have a school and all you know how to do is cut curly wavy kinky hair? My advanced class on Sundays and Mondays, I would teach the hairstylist how to cut curly wavy kinky hair. I would teach a lot of the Caucasians in Nashville, Tennessee, how to cut curly wavy kinky hair because the majority of them didn't know how to cut, you know, curly wavy kinky hair. I could do it. So that was my advanced class. And they just thought I was just this great expert, not knowing I can't cut straight hair. I can't do a color. Um, I could do a relaxer, a roller set. I didn't know how to do nothing, y'all. And I still don't know how to do none of that. I used to teach it. I could read out of the My Lady's book and teach whatever. That don't mean you got to know how to do it. And when they wanted me to do it, I say, look, nope, you're the student. I'm the instructor. If I do that for you, you're not going to know how to do it. Your mama didn't just tie your shoe all the time. You would have never learned how to tie your shoe. So I, I, I could tell them how to do the 45 degree angle, the 90 degree cut, all of that and couldn't do it myself. They never knew that. They know it now because I I'm sharing that with you all. So what I'm saying, you don't have to know how to do all of this stuff to be a successful school owner. Mr. Dudley don't not look, Mr. Dudley don't even have a barber license. There are a lot of school owners that have gone through my program. Heck, they worse than me, y'all. They don't even have a license. They don't know how to do nothing. They just gonna hire instructors to work. At least I knew how to cut curly wavy kinky hair. So don't discount yourself. The vending machines. You'd be surprised, them vending machines, go to Sam's. I, I didn't even have money for a vending machine. So I'm old school, like the little corner store. I go to Sam's and buy, I don't know, put it in the chat box. What's y'all favorite snack? I like peanut M&Ms. What y'all like? Snickers, the powder donuts, chocolate donuts. It might be one of my former students, Marco Harris, I believe. Now, y'all be surprised. My vending would pay my light bill and water bill from the vending machines. Them students and clients will buy them snacks. Footnote, write this down. Do not put any fruit in the machines. They don't want apples, oranges, bananas. They don't want nothing healthy. That's right, Antonio Rivers. Peanut M&Ms. Put them peanut M&Ms in there. Candies, that's right. Put them Twix in there. Put stuff in there that's unhealthy. That's what's going to sell the most. We get it from Sam's at a real cheap price and then guess what we resell it oh clarissa said popcorn and the hot cheetos daniel the snickers that's right and put some of them doritos the cool wrench that's gonna make you some money i'm telling you all it doesn't matter how you start snacks is the under basket the honor system okay military buddy y'all can get that after two years i love the military students one they act like they got sense kimberly two after your two years that you get qualified, the military pays that money up front. If your tuition is 20000 25000 15000 they're going to cut the check. They're going to send it right on. Dan, how do we get a machine? Okay, Mary said Facebook Marketplace. Y'all can Google. The way technology is right now, y'all can Google it. She said Facebook Marketplace. Google. Stuff will come up. Go on eBay. There's all kinds of places now. The VA. After two years, you can get the VA money. I love the VA students. And Vogue Rehab vocational rehabilitation 
Once y'all get that, all y'all students probably going to qualify for vocational rehabilitation. That's for anybody that has a mental, physical, health or dependency problem. Hell, I, I could have qualified for voc rehab. I'm crazy. I got issues. I grew up in a dysfunctional family. So, yes. Now, the next thing, the grants. We're going to have a whole segment on the, the grants, the money, the financial aid, the accreditation and all that. But I'm just kind of going over this a little brief uh, bit. And I encourage you all to get mentors. As you can see, I've had mentors all my life. Since I was in my early 20s, I started getting mentors when I got out of prison. You see me with Bishop Jakes, me with Miss Velma. I met Miss Velma years ago, years ago, when I met her, Michelle, Vivian. And i never forget, she had that school. It was doing about a million a month. She had a chain of schools. The government was paying her. I was 26 years old in 1998. I was tired of working in the shop. I wanted a better life. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I mean, I didn't know. But it doesn't matter how you start. Don't matter how you start. What matters is how you finish. And when I joined her program, there was a lot of people against me. I don't know if y'all ever told people you were going to do something and they laughed in your face or they told you, you can't do this. You don't have what it takes. You don't have the money. You don't have the resources. You didn't grow up in the right neighborhood. Your mom was this. Your dad was that. You're an ex-convict. You've been in prison. You, I mean, it was all of these things. And they were going on in my head, too. Uh, that white lady is going to take your money. You're an Uncle Tom. I mean, I heard everything. Miss Velma became my second mama, my second mom. And as you can see, we were together the day she died, about a year or two ago. And that was the best decision that I ever made. I didn't have the resources. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't. And she led me into her program, y'all. And I did not have the resources. I didn't even think I was going to qualify. And had she not worked with me, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't. And I want to share this with y'all. She let me do a payment plan. She had two programs, a bronze and a gold. And um, the gold program was where they would do a lot of the paperwork for me and with me. And I knew I wasn't good in paperwork. I was scared. I was scared of accreditation. I heard all of this stuff about accreditation, scared of the federal government. You know, I was scared of them. Hell, I just got out of federal prison. You know, people say, oh, you go to jail fooling with that federal money and this and that. So I knew I needed a mentor and help. And I told her I wanted the gold program. I didn't want the bronze. I didn't want to have to do everything myself. I wanted the gold. I wanted to go gold. And she said she would do a payment plan. I was the first black person. And she said, Chen, I want you to pay it forward. And 12 years ago, I was able to, to partner with her on that program. And I'm going to put a link down here for all of y'all. Although I usually wait to the end to put this link up, but it doesn't matter. I'll put the link up now. And I'm going to call each and every one of y'all back probably tomorrow for y'all that are interested, but you still need to see about the accreditation, about the grant money. We still got some more hours to go. So you don't have to fill out that form just yet. You may want to fill it out and then submit it, um, but I'm going to call you back tomorrow. But Miss Velma, she let me get in that program and everybody was against me. They were talking crazy. Let me share this screen because I really want y'all to see this. And I contemplated and wondered the worst case scenario because i told miss velma i said well what if i fail you know all these things are playing on in my head i mean a lot of stuff was going on and she said she you're already at the bottom she said you're really already at the bottom of failure what she mean by that she said chin when you got out of prison were you not at the bottom i said yeah i was i was living at the halfway house what were you doing i said i was cutting hair she said if you open this school and you don't follow my blueprint or whatever, and you happen to fail, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go back to cut in half. She said, you're already at the bottom. If everything fails in your life, think about that, y'all. All of us on here, if everything fails in our life, what are we going to do? How are we going to make some money? We'll do exactly what we're doing right now. We're already at the bottom. You're already at the bottom. Just like she told me, the only lower you can go is a crackhead. And my friend, one of my friends I grew up with, he was a crackhead. When he got out of rehab, guess what he did? Went to the barbershop and started back cutting hair. So really, like she told me, what do you have to lose? You ain't got nothing to lose. Oh, I got my shop and I'm in it. 
you're already at the bottom. That's the bottom right there. Hey, when I was in prison, I cut hair. So the way I looked at that was, dang, I don't have nothing to lose. So I went for it. I invested in the program, had me a little credit card, put down what I could, and she worked out a payment plan with me. Long story short, we'll keep going. I ended up opening that school, getting accredited, getting government money. But I wanted you all to see Miss Velma. No man or woman, if you see them here, they didn't get that by themselves. If you see a turtle on top of the fence, that turtle didn't get that by itself. No. Now, the decisions you make today is going to affect the rest of your life. I have people that's been following me for years and they ain't done nothing yet. They must love being on that hamster wheel. There's Miss Velma. I decided to join the program. There were others that joined and they quit. I'm so glad I didn't quit, y'all. I'm so glad. Quitters never win. Winners never quit. I stayed the course. You got to stay the course. I was 26 years old. Best decision that I ever made. Best decision. I mean, I've been in Ebony Magazine, all of that. I've been doing stuff a long time, y'all. This right here was in 2021. 21 years ago. Not 2021, but 2000. That was 21 years ago, y'all, in Ebony Magazine. So it's not like I didn't just drop out of the sky like all these people y'all see on instagram with programs and mentorship and all that no i was doing this before the internet long time google me youtube me been around a very long time so y'all can open this school today tomorrow whenever you won't be able to get a credit about three years but you got to start somewhere step one what's the first thing you need to do Step one, you got to get in your mind and that's what you want to do. You got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're going to have to look at the rules and regulations to see what's required. Yes. Step one, you need to get in some type of program where you can be guided, the shortcut, the easier way. You got to do that business plan. That's in step one. Now, this dude, Gerard, they said he was crazy because he opened his school during the pandemic. Why everybody else is panicking. When, when this pandemic hit, Everybody else was panicking. Guess what he did? I'm going to let him tell y'all. So this happened in March. Pan a week later, the epidemic came, that, that whole pandemic came. And I'm like, how am I going to get money to get this done? And I, I began to draw unemployment. So I took all of my unemployment money. Everybody else are buying Jordans and buying bottles of Moet and flashing. They got their arm with $100 bills all on their arms, you know, stretching out. And, and I'm like, I took every penny of my unemployment and put it in my business. I, I went uh, on overseas overseas and ordered barber shares. And, and I just began to take my old stations. I had a friend, I cut his hair and his friend's hair and he custom, he worked at custom cabinets and he began to custom all of my cabinets. And I, I, I we paint, we stayed in there late night. I had a friend who, who does drywall and let, electricity. I paid him out by cutting him and his family haircut. I used my skills. Okay. Now, he opened during the pandemic. He took his unemployment checks. Gerard, now, of Legacy Barber School. Now, let's go and uh, do a little research. So I wanted y'all to see this. I definitely wanted y'all to see this. And this is going to be on the recording. You see his page, because there are going to be people to see this. You see his face. There he is. And I got to have this on the recording. Them cutting the ribbon. There's no reenactment. They just can't. They're cutting the ribbon with his children now. Very important. Now, a lot of people, they're always asking me this question. How can my school survive without grants? I get that question asked all the time, Crystal. It's like people are scared to open a school because the government is not going to give them grants off the rip soon as they open. Well, you're not scared to open a shop and the government ain't going to never give you no grants. Why are you not scared to open a shop and the government will never, ever, ever, like the, the comedian says, give you grants. But yet when it's time to open a school, you want to get scared because you can't get grants off the top. Imagine if Chen opened a shop, if all y'all opened a school and I opened a shop, I'm only going to get boofering or commission and me working. Y'all open the school, y'all going to get 100% commission. The students got to work for free. You get all of that money. Plus, you take all your clients with you to the school. When the state board comes in, make sure you got a student standing by the chair. Oh, I'm just doing a demonstration. Ain't nothing they can do. Charge your clients full price. Find a building that you can afford. Quit looking at all them. Start off where you can start. I started in an old, raggedy building 
in the hood. My bills was cheaper at that school than they was at the barbershop that I had. Find something that you can manage and afford. So what if the students don't have a lot of money to pay? Your clinic floor, you doing your clients, they will keep you above water until you get accredited. Once you get accredited, boom, it's over, baby. It's game time. It's like you don't connect it with Pablo Escobar, El Chapo. You can make cocaine money. You can go to the moon, baby. It's over at that time. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's how you're going to survive. And then you got TFC tuition. I'm going to go through that, too. They'll finance the students. They'll give you a monthly check, but the students have to pay them. That's good because if you got to come to the student where you ain't paid your money, that's kind of difficult. But when they got to pay TFC tuition, that takes you out of the loop. That removes you from the equation. So you can easily put the student out because they hadn't paid TFC. And TFC going to pay you. And TFC reported to the credit bureau. So it helps their credit too. So that's really great, y'all. But I always get that question. They always ask that. And with that accreditation, look, if you can open up a school today, and get accredited tomorrow and get government money, Shelly, everybody and their mama will have a school. Like there's a barber and beauty and nail shop on every corner. Do you know why? Because it's easy as pie to get. You could be dumbing in a box of rocks and get a shop. You could be literally special, dyslexic or whatever and get a shop. Yeah, but a school, baby, that's a total different level. Total different ball game. You got to prove to the government that you can run this school. You can do all of this paperwork and everything. And that's great that they have that because it keeps the naysayers. It keeps the ducks out. It's only for the eagles. And that's great because you know why? When you get that school and you get accredited, look, you get to make millions of dollars. It separates you from everybody else. So it's good that they have those walls because most of y'all ain't going to climb over the walls. You let a, you let a little bitty wall stop you from leaving an inheritance to your kids from breaking generational wealth. You let a little bitty wall stop you from living the lifestyle that you truly deserve. You could be living a life of flying first class. Hell, you can fly on a jet when you get a credit. Traveling, staying at the best hotels. Look, y'all should, I was tired of staying at Motel 8 and the Red Roof Inn where you could do something you ain't got no business doing and that curtain don't always close and you got to rig that curtain up. I was tired of getting hotels where you enter the bedroom from the outside, where they give you a key. You should be tired of them type of hotels. See, when you get a school to become accredited, you get to stay at the five-star hotels, the nice hotels, where when you go outside your door, you still inside the building. You get to eat at the nice restaurants. You get to shop till you drop and don't even look at prices you, you get to give back. You get to help the needy, help the less fortunate. You get to throw it in your ex-husband face, your ex-wife face, my ex-girlfriend that left me. Let me tell y'all something. Success is the best revenge. So opening that school, becoming the credit, it has its perks. I don't know. You're one school away. I don't know what you one school away from. I, I'm going to put that down. I want y'all to put in there. What you one school away from? What are y'all one school away from? I was one school away from retiring my mama, buying her a mansion, being able to travel, being able to buy whatever she wanted, being able to eat the type at whatever restaurant I wanted and take care of everybody, being able to go to a restaurant and see a woman over there with her two or three or four kids with no man. And I can tell the waiter, I got their bill. What? You know them? No, I don't know them. But I remember when I was a kid out with my mama and she's scrapping together. You're one school away from what? Financial freedom. I mean, let, let me read some. What are y'all one school away from? The best of my life, Shannon. Clarissa, my dreams, life of freedom. Daniel, generational wealth for my children. Raise Elite Barbershop, retirement. Karen, financial freedom and a legacy for my family. You one school away, Victoria, the life of freedom, travel, retirement. I mean, think about that. Vivian, freedom. Y'all are one school away. One school away, and then you get that school, and you work it. Follow the blueprint. And then three years later, let me tell y'all something. Shonda, financial freedom, being a blessing to others. Let me tell y'all something. Three years is fast. Y'all think three years is a long time. It's Look, y'all, it's going to be 2022. 
It's getting ready to be 2022. 2022 is here, y'all. Time is flying. So that's how the school will survive without financial aid. Creation of the largest body of professional barbers in college. That's right in Maryland. Y'all look at this. I want y'all, y'all need to watch this video. Okay, I'm down here in Atlanta at the hair show. We got Miss Deidre, and I had to get by her school, uh, CEI. She has about 250 students, and um, her tuition is $1,000. And she's been in business how long, did you? Uh, like going on 11 years. What made you open this school? Um, I just like, I love education. I love people. I love to see people win. Um, I love to see people win at an affordable rate. Uh, and here at CBI, we cultivate, educate, and inspire in all areas of your life. We want to make sure that when you graduate, you not only get you move that free, but that you pass the state board. We are proud to have 100% pass rate with the Georgia State Board. Um, of testing in the areas of barbering, cosmetology, aesthetics, and nails. Now, a lot of school owners I talk to all the time, and they're scared to open schools because they're not getting government money. But you don't want the government money, and your tuition is only a thousand dollars. So, what would you tell them um, who are scared, but they have a dream of opening a school? Um, scared money doesn't make money. Um, you have to figure out what you have that no one else has, what you can offer that no one else can offer and figure out how to ride that till the wheels fall off. There is a six, this is a six billion dollar industry. You just have to figure out where you're gifted and how that can impact the industry. Um, and, and you'll be just fine. Business is business. Um, you, can't, you can't do anything if you never start. So I say just start. I wanted y'all to hear this. She says scared money don't make money. So what would you like to leave them with, Deidre? Make sure that you're passionate about education and not just looking for a, a quick hustle. Uh, a lot of business owners I've seen start and close within two years because they're, they're going into it thinking it's a get rich quick scheme, and it's not. Um, you've got to give people the education that they're paying for. You've got to make sure that when they leave you, they can pass their board. And not only can they just pass their board, but can they operate effectively? So give the people what they're paying for. So what are some of the things that you teach your students that other schools don't? Um, we teach them everything about money. We, go, we teach money management. We teach um, building business credit. We teach um, uh, trade lines, which everybody's trying to get into at this point in time. Um, we teach them how to, to market branding. Um, we teach them how to speak to people. We teach them how to pop up. We teach them how to not just be in the community, but be of the community um, so that they can continue to prosper where they are. Well, I thank you very much, Ms. Deidre, for taking your time out to share with the world. Thank you. Now, that was Deidre. She doesn't even want financial aid. So I definitely wanted y'all to know that. You have all the excuses. I don't know where to start. I'm going to show y'all where to start. You, you just started. By being here, you started. Limited funds. I'm going to take you step by step. We're going in the back office. After our lunch break, y'all are going to definitely get y'all's pen and paper out because we're going to go through straight opening the school, becoming the credit, getting government money, all the paperwork, the documents. I'm going to take y'all on the back of the gold print, that, that back office, that gold program. Y'all going to be back there. So... Doesn't matter if you don't know where to start. You don't have the funds. I'm going to work with you. I'll work out a payment plan with you. The money's not important. It's not important to me. I don't need the money. My goal and mission is to help you. I'm going to get a thousand school owners. I've got 400 and something. I'm going to get them thousands. Yeah, we, we're taking over. Yeah, we, we're going to take over. That, that's a given. So you can do it. Kamasi. Thankful that I've had the opportunity. I'm not going to go through his. This guy that you're looking at, Networks Barber College, you can Google him, YouTube him. He has three schools in Chicago. He only made $2 million last year, y'all. That was from the school. Two mil. Do you, I don't know if you know what $2 million is. $2 million is, he looked, made a little bit over $2 million. So he made a, almost $200,000 a month. He made about $200,000 a month. Well, all of that wasn't profit. No, it was not. One instructor teaching 20 students. His tuition is $20,000. Do the math. $20,000 times 20 students, that's $400,000. What you going to pay that instructor? Peanuts, crumbs, 
get them 30, 40,000 a year. That's it, 20,000, pay them crumbs. Oh, well, that ain't fair to school. I ain't getting paid nothing. You shouldn't get paid nothing. School owners, look, entrepreneur, when you take the risk of opening your school, let me tell you this, a job, J-O-B, just out of broke, just over broke. A job is, cre- look, let me tell you what a job is. A job is created to make the owners rich, okay? If you're an instructor, your job was created to make that school owner rich, and that's it. Being a school owner, a school owner's job is not to make the instructor rich and become a millionaire. Get that out of your head. Get it out of your head right now. If you work at a fast food place or whatever, it is not created. That that owner, the fast food place or business did not create that business to make you rich. He created it for you to be an employee, a worker bee, and make him or her rich for you to do all the work. So the, so they could travel. Yeah, you need to be doing all the traveling, living the lifestyle you truly deserve. Let them work and wake up and run that business while you live the life that you want to live. This is Kamasi. Go to Networks Barber College. Follow him on Instagram. He don't have a lot of followers. He don't need a lot. He got the school. The government's paying 20000 a student. This dude started off as a barber behind a chair in Chicago. Don't know where to get students. Your students are on social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. That's where your students at. You get your students with Facebook ads. You have a cell phone. Every student has a cell phone. Run ads to people between the ages of 18 to 35 in your city. Facebook ads, it pops up. Hey, want to be your own boss? Earn financial independence? Click the link. They click it, fill out a little form. It goes to your email. You call them back. Which means you don't know where you're going to get students. Go to the high schools. Go to different churches. Go to the prisons. Students everywhere. Go to the grocery stores. Go to Goodwill. We got Mr. Alvarez on here. He, he's on this live right now. I remember we talked on a live one time. I was in the back of my barber shop. You had asked me what's stopping you from opening up a school. And my, my whole thing was funding. I didn't know how to get a loan from a bank or let alone even was even thinking about. Stop this right now. Alvarez, neighbors, can you come on here? I'm going to bring him on here right now. Because I see him, and I believe that's him. If that's you, come up here, Mr. Alvarez. If that's you, we want to see your face. Neighbors. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Nieves Alvarez. Uh, I opened up my school in May of this year. And, uh, I mean, it's been a good ride so far. Now, you did win the Naha Awards, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this year, as a matter of fact, also, yeah, I won the Men's Hairstylist of the Year Award uh, for the North American Awards and uh, first barber to actually win a Naha Award. So I think we shook the industry up, you know, uh, just being a barber entering into a competition like this. Now, the category I won has now changed to Barber of the Year. So the last trophy that there will be that says men's hairstylist of the year on it. I have it. Mm. How does it feel to be a school owner? I mean, you've done everything. You're one of the best barbers in the world. Hands down. You have an unfair advantage. I mean, you've worked your butt off and worked hard, but you also have a God given talent too. How does it feel? You achieved all that, but how does it feel to be a school owner? I mean, me, myself, I kind of have like a a sense of, you know, all the hard work that I've been putting in. Eventually, it's going to get to the point where it, it pays off in that big way, you know. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, once you do get the school going, you know, you still you still got to put in work, you know, and. One of the first things I did was I, I kind of brought my my family in. So I got my son in. I got my wife in. My wife just got her barber uh, license. She just passed the exam last week. So now she's enrolled as a, a student teacher. I mean, she she helps me out tremendously. She do, she's doing a lot more, <laughs> you know. And one thing about her is she's like really fluent in Spanish, you know. So she actually wants to teach our program in Spanish. So now we're offering Spanish classes. Um, I don't know of any barber school that offers classes in Spanish. I've never 
seen it anywhere in my in in my area. I'm out in uh, Illinois. I've not seen that. So I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to, uh, you know, tapping into that market. That's great. Anything else you want to share? Um, I was chiming in. I'm just kind of, you know, like every now and then I, I see you pop up and I'm like, yeah, let me let me go in into the live or into the Zoom. Every time I watch, I take something out of it. Every time I kind of chime in, I just kind of put my ear out and listen to things that I might not be doing um, that I could try. I just think that even when you have your doors open, if you open a school, you still need to keep on pushing. You still need to keep on working. I heard somebody say on on the video, one of the video testimonials about you're you're the police, <laughs> you're you're the counselor, you're the mother, the father. I mean, the things I have encountered <laughs> and and I have become <laughs> 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 it's a uh, it's something that you you definitely want to consider. Um, and I'm just glad that you know, uh, me and my wife, we kind of like, we talk to each other. Sometimes she's the rational thought. And sometimes I'm the rational thought, you know, because you will get upset at some of the things that go on <laughs> and, and you want to react in certain ways and you just have to rise above it. And that's kind of what, what my, uh, <laughs> my quote of the week has been, <laughs> you, we got to rise above this, you know? We can't fall into into this stuff, you know, so and and just owning the school, you do look for, you know, I know people who own schools and, and that I could pick the phone up and call and ask them about certain things. There's just a lot of stuff that you, you don't see coming, you know, so uh, it's good to to have that network and, and, you know, be able to talk to some people about certain things. So. I mean, right now that I'm just talking and thinking about it, it's just, you know, things that I'm chiming in to hear here on these Zooms. I'm, I'm, I appreciate these Zooms, you know, so we've been sitting here for hours already. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't had a bowl of cereal, <laughs> you know, uh, I wrote down some things and, you know, the it don't stop once you're open, you know, and you you got to continue to um find things that are working well for you and um and whatever ain't working you know just move past it and keep going you know all right well i'm proud of you i talk about you all the time and you keep going um anything you want to leave them with um i mean a lot of people aspire uh to open a school i think it's a great thing i mean i know for a fact that in the short amount of time I had a barber shop since 2005. So since I've had the school, I know that I'm watching the progression of the school and it's it's tenfold from what the barber shop was bringing, you know? So with that, I mean, that right there says says a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, they heard it. I'm going to go to your Instagram page because we got some people on here that don't know you. Well, when I say stuff or tell people stuff, I'm from the Shelby state because I don't like believe anything that I really hear. I got to see stuff, too. So I definitely want to take them to your Instagram page because I think seeing is believing. I mean, it, it really helps people to see stuff. So I'm going to go to this. So I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to go to your school. So I'm going to share this uh, Instagram page. Can you see the school? Yeah, I see it. Let me go on down where you can kind of, and you're a perfectionist. You know that, don't you? You do everything with excellence. Tell, tell them how you got this school together, how it was before. <laughs> well, that, I mean, this, what you're looking at right there is actually a, a picture of, uh, of a barber shop oh. that I owned before. The barber shop was in that location for eight years. I mean, there's so many times when you talk about being behind that chair and barbers coming in and coming out, they build up, they take clientele, and then they, they go open down the street from you, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do own the school, you do have that peace of mind where, hey, nobody's here to stay, <laughs> you know? It ain't, I'm not in the business of keeping you. I'm going to show you things and get you ready to uh, 
B state board prep. And that's kind of like uh, what my thought process was. So this, this is the other side of the school that you're looking at. So I was fortunate enough that the location next to me became vacant. And I was able just to kind of like make an opening in the wall and expand through to the other side. And even when I expanded over, you know, since I, I've owned shops since 2005, I knew how to utilize the space. And I've been told, like, you want to use every square foot to make money off of. And that don't only include the square footage of the chairs that are spinning for you. That includes the square footage on the wall, the ceiling. You need to be making money off of every square foot of your business. So if you find a way to do that, you're definitely winning. So even since those pictures, I mean, there's been a lot of growth within uh, since May and bringing in students. This was probably one of the, yeah, this is the first group I've had. Three of them have graduated already. This right here is uh, the Barber Evo cover. I guess we could call that the rolling stone of the barber industry right now. And uh, I made the cover for that. Let's go to your page. Oh, that was another thing I did uh, recently Where? that I, I haven't posted up. The How to Fade Hair Mixer up there. You see that flyer? So I, may, I make all my flyers on my own. I, I use Canva. <laughs> and I, I've gotten so good at it. I, I mean, it, it's just crazy. I used to pay people hundreds of dollars to do this. <laughs> you know? So here, what I did was I did an educational class at the school. This is the Naha collection, uh, the, the, the three photos that are lined up together. That is how I won the North American um, men's category this year. 12, 12 hours it took me to do those three cuts. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all worth it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me on the red carpet with the award. Yeah, I mean, man, this this whole year has just been a, a roller coaster ride for me. It's just been a lot of work and preparation. That's what I like to tell everybody. Um, you know, people see they kind of see me like you're blowing up this year. I mean, I've been getting so many more messages that I never got. Like, <laughs> you know, oh man, you you you're doing it. You you know, you're doing your thing. Blah blah blah. You know, and I mean, I've been doing this for over ten years you know, just grinding and grinding and preparing and preparing. And that's what I tell. I tell everybody, I tell my students this, you want to be prepared because if opportunity comes up and you ain't prepared, you're going to lose that opportunity. That's what I always leave, leave my students with. And, you know, that's the way I look at 2021 for me has been and whatever been thrown at me, I was able to take it and turn it into what was long overdue. You know, when you put that work in, it's going to pay off. Mm -hmm. Well, you keep up the great work. You inspired a lot of people. I know I always talk about you and Miguel. Uh, then there's another Miguel, too. Um, every time I come in contact with a Hispanic, um, with me being black, you know, I say, well, I got some Hispanic friends now they, that have gone through the program. And I always let them know about y'all. They'll go look y'all up. They probably call y'all. Or whatever, but y'all are inspiring a lot of people um, for them to see you all grow. So that's good. For that's sure. Good. For sure. No, I appreciate you too, man. Uh, definitely. Let me pull up this screen for y'all. I think I'll, yeah, this is where I was. So y'all just heard from Davis Alvarez. So we'll keep on going. This was my first school, y'all. It was a hole in the wall. If y'all look at the ceiling, the roof was leaking. I used to have, I don't know if y'all eat chitlins. I used to eat chitlins back in the day because I'm from the hood in the south. I had chitlin buckets all the way around, them red buckets catching this water because the roof used to leak. This school was in the hood. Miss Velman, y'all write this down because I was broke and didn't have no money. I had the raggedest, cheapest school in the worst part of town. That was all I could afford. I did the minimum square footage. Quit looking at these big mega schools. You got to start where you can start. Well, I don't want my school over there. Well, I don't want my school to look like this. I'm first class. Let me tell y'all something. 
You cannot have champagne taste with Coca-Cola money. You have to start where you can. Some of y'all are going to get started in a big way. Some of y'all are going to get started in a small way. All of that stuff in that office came from Goodwill. Go to the Goodwills that are located in the rich part of your city. Okay? They have good stuff. You'd be surprised what you can find. All the equipment in there. Buy Right Beauty in Atlanta. Richard would do a payment plan. We're going to go through all of the wholesale vendors and contacts. I started with zero students. Zero. Okay? I was the janitor, front desk operator, toilet bowl cleaner, admissions rep, uh, theory instructor, practical floor instructor. I don't care how you get started, but get started. Don't worry about, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. You look at what you do have. God will send people to help you. If you do what you can do, God will do what you cannot do. When you first open your school, you're probably not going to have uh, no 20, 30, 40, 50 students anyway. So you don't worry about that. Quit worrying about what you don't have. That little kid that you're looking at right there. And another thing, look like you somebody. All of my friends talked about me, said, oh, you monkey, you don't F with us no more. They said all kind of stuff because I put a shirt on and a tie and I didn't have my pants hanging off my behind. Let me tell y'all something. Don't let ducks put something in your mind. Eagles don't listen to ducks. You're an eagle. Do not listen to a duck. Y'all got to watch who y'all listen to. Doesn't matter how you start. I had zero students. And I'm saying, God, you said you was going to give me 200. These 100 students ain't nothing. I'm calling God's pocket. I'm calling his hand. When I had zero students, I didn't walk around. Oh, I ain't got no students. Don't put that negative energy. You force God to bless you. God, I only got 100 students. Is that all you're going to give me? You told me you was going to give me 200. See, the conscious mind and the sub the subconscious mind don't know if it's right or wrong. Y'all got to speak that thing. And I gave out over 1,000 free haircut cards, sprayed cologne all on them, and gave them out to the women. They brought them little kids there. Some of them got their eyebrow arched, and I put cologne on my wrist and hands. Then women would get in my chair. And I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't put, I didn't give no, I was prejudiced when I gave out my business cards. Yeah, I can tell y'all. I was prejudiced. Granted, my friend, you wasn't getting no business card from me. Y'all was not getting a business card from me. You did not fit the criteria. I only gave my business cards to the with the heavy tongue, the, the women that only could wear stretch pants, the, you, you had to be at least 300 and up to get a business card from me. Because I wasn't giving it to y'all. Y'all pretty women, beautiful. Me try to holler at y'all. No, uh-uh. I gave them to the other ones. And I would smile and compliment them. They may have their nails done or their eyebrows, um, have a short haircut, knowing they need long hair because they had all that Fat meat on the back of their neck, roll. No, I gave the cars to them and they'd bring their kids. Oh, it's free. And I have TD Jakes or no more. She's wanting to buy them plan and stuff. Nice environment. And then when they left, I called Big Tika. Hey, Miss Tika, this is Chin from the Barber College. I just wanted to call and thank you for bringing Man Man by there. Now, Man Man done about tore up the school, wouldn't be still running around. I'd give him a little, uh, a little Snickers or candy, piece of candy, because I knew then they're going to tell Mama, I want to go back to that Mr. Chin Barber School. The next time they came, guess what? They had to pay. And they brought other people to pay. And Tika would want to get her eyebrows arched, and she would pay. Tika would give me a tip. That's how I built my clinic floor up. And it was booming. That's how I did it. We'll keep going. So you got to have different strategies on how you're going to do so. Now y'all got Facebook, Instagram, so it's totally different. We, we hit that. This was my school. Yeah, the little kitty chairs. Y'all see the little first grade chairs in there. We needed 15 bar, uh, little chairs. I went and got them. This was my office. Y'all see the clinic floor right there. That was me cutting hair. This right here, chalkboard. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all ain't old enough to remember the chalkboard. That was it right there. And I teach and right on that chalkboard. There's Miss Valmashin. There she is, Zandra. Y'all got it easy. 
Y'all see these big booklets? We used to have to retype stuff. I done made it easy for y'all. I digitized everything. Well, all you got to do is click a button and it downloads. And all you got to do is put your name on it. And I got video trainers for y'all in the back office. We're going to hit that after this late lunch. It's already done for y'all. There's Miss Velma right there. Y'all y'all have no excuse. <clears throat> this was my first group. That was my first group, Vivian. This dude right here, he paid my light bill every month. Dar Darian. Darian paid my light bill every month, Shonda. To King. You know why? He stayed at the snack machine. Uh, they used to call me Mr. Chin. And I was just a little boy. Uh, uh, Mr. Chin, I want you to get them white powder donuts. Will you go set? Make sure you get the uh the hot Cheetos too. He had his own list, y'all, and he would raid that machine. That vendor to make a lot of money. This group right here, it was special. My first group. Something was wrong with everybody. Eddie's been to prison, molestation, beat up, bad relationship. Everybody in the whole school was jacked up. Something was wrong with us. From from the owner, me, from the head all the way down. But you know what? You give them love. You treat them like they somebody. I'd hug my students back then. I know we got COVID now. I call them by their name, Mr. Darren. Hey, you, how you doing, Mr. Terrell, Mr. Burks? I even got why I would call them doctor. Dr. Burks, what's going on? Dr. Rod. And a smile would just light up because my students, we'd all been beat up by the world. The world had beat us up. No one had ever respected us, shown us love. And that school was like a family. I'd go to Kroger's and I'd buy bologna and peanut butter and oatmeal and bread and chips sometimes for them. Sometimes they didn't even have money. Some of the women come on, they cycle. They didn't even have money for pads and stuff. I give them money so they could go have that. Just the bare necessities that other people took for granted. A lot of my students didn't have. So my school was like a ministry. It was more than just styling and cutting hair. And we didn't just read the barber book. We read Think and Grow Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cash Flow Quadrant, The Richest Man in Babylon, The Four Agreements, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. When my students left, they had a, a Harvard business education. Tony Robbins, Personal Development. Y'all raised the bar, your students. You give them everything you got. This is just speaking to others at different groups or whatever. I, I ain't got to give y'all no more testimonies. Raise a chick, Kim Kim, I've helped them with product lines, done a lot of stuff. Y'all one school away. Yeah, I, I can show y'all the money and stuff. If y'all want to see the financial aid, I record it on the computer. I, I don't even know if y'all want to look at that. If, if you do, say yes, and, and I'll show y'all that. I mean, we, we can keep going to the teaching. If y'all don't want to watch that video, I can go on. If you want to see how the financial aid looks, how the government actually sends the money and you have the computer system set up, i play that video for y'all just so y'all can see that the financial, our friend said, yeah, okay, here, let me go ahead, do this real quick for y'all. This is why I went in the back office of my computer system showing where the financial aid comes. Let me, let me play this real quick. That's the financial aid report. They wire the money to your bank account. That's the student's last name, whether they graduated with Drew, A received, or all of that. Um, going down, the government sent 20,000, 18, 19, 21. Go to the next page. Uh, yeah, they're going to click on the next page and scroll down. So when you see A received, that's where they send all the government money right here. Y'all see 20,000, 15,000, uh, 24,000. All that's financial aid. Government, that's them wiring money to my bank account for the students. I'm, I'm just going through a whole list of students, but y'all can kind of see that number. Now there's a summary. The summary is you see the balance. There's the aid received right there. That was 5.8 million, then 1.5 still was needed. So that's basically um, a, a financial aid thing, but now y'all can kind of see that from a bird's eye view. Now, I can share this with y'all. Yeah, I did start in a little cracker box school. Some of y'all gonna have to start in a little small school. But in three years, you follow the blueprint, you'll be accredited. I had the smallest school 
in the whole, the smallest barber school in the United States, Zandra. Everybody laughed at it, Antonio, Crystal. Yeah, the roof was leaking. I had the smallest school and the smallest barber school. But I got a credit at Key, and I'm going to tell y'all something. God, one thing God cannot do, God cannot lie. He said, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. I ended up having the largest barber school in the entire United States. It was God. Over 200 and something students here in the richest part of Nashville. Tuition was $20,000 a student. You do the math. Did that for years. Not just that, but impacted a lot of people. But I wanted to show y'all that. Not just that school. That was the biggest one. But I had other schools. I opened up the east, the west, the north, the south. And I'll leave y'all with this. Any barber we're gonna take a break. Tech, beauty professional that wants to change their life, that wants to up their level, you're tired of working behind the chair and you want to move to the next level and you want to live a lifestyle of family, freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, then I recommend the school blueprint, openyourschool.com. Uh, Ms. Velma created this program for beauty professionals just like you and me who want to move to the next level. I have my mom in here. She'll tell you a little bit about it. So how has me opening that school changed your life? Well, we were living uh, in the neighborhood. It was a pretty nice neighborhood in Nashville. And so after Chen opened the school and had worked a while, he told me he wanted me to retire. And about that time was the time that I was going to be at the age and have the years in. So he was able, so I, he was able to convince me to retire. And I did, and he moved, uh, I didn't even know he had this house, but he always said that he wanted to get a, another house for me and let, so that I could retire and just do the things I wanted to do while I was still able to do them. And so since I've been out here in Hendersonville, I've enjoyed a life of, something that I never imagined. And I'm enjoying the house. I'm enjoying being with him because he works from home. And uh, I just sort of keep house the best I can, but I'm living a, a really good retirement life because of him. Well, I know a lot of y'all want to start creating generational wealth and retire your mom or grandma or your wife or husband. And move to a better place and have financial freedom and time freedom. If you're in the beauty industry, then I recommend the school. Okay, I want to share that with you all. I don't know what your why is, why you want to open a school, why you want to get government money, become a credit. I don't know what your why is. Everybody has a different why. I wanted to retire my mom. Uh, we grew up in, in poverty. You see the pictures, single parent mom. I don't know if y'all know what it's like to grow up with a single parent mom. For me to be able to have that school and be able to retire this woman right here and buy her a house that she never dreamed of, that was it was because of God, but it was because of I made a decision. Life is based on choices, decisions. Takenya made a decision to open her school. Nevis, he made a decision to open his school. Mary Negron, she made a decision. Cynthia, stay ready Nels. I could go down the line with probably up to 400 people that made a decision to open a school. I wanted that school so I could be able to buy my mom the house that she used to take us to when we was kids and pay five dollars to walk into. See, that's where we grew up. This was her island. And I cried when we was living like this because I wanted better for my mama. And with that school, I was able to get her a real island, y'all. For me to be for me to see her wipe down. I didn't even know what a granite countertop was. Well, we got stuff in this kitchen where the doors are closed by themselves. I don't even know the name of them. You know, those rich people, they know the names because Miss Belma 
she was the one that said, oh, you got to get those such and such cabinets and such and such drawers. To this day, I still don't know. I ain't know nothing about no this edge stuff, whatever they call that. Have the stuff in there. I don't even know what it is. I know nothing about the different grades of hardwood floors. Hell, I thought hardwood was hardwood uh, key, Kim, but it's not. They're, they're, they're different grades and, and stuff. I ain't know nothing about any of that stuff. But I'm only sharing y'all, I'm only showing this with y'all not to impress you, but to impress upon you, Erica, to let you know it can be done. Give your wife, give your mama their flowers while they're here. My mama used to have to shampoo her hair in a sink. She'd bend over. She got a salon, y'all, in a house. Ping pong pool, me and uh now Antonio came over my house and stayed with me and dogged me out. He spent a couple of nights, him, the little princess, his daughter, and his wife. And I always loved and enjoyed people when they come over. Somebody exposed me to different things. And Antonio may want to come on here. <laughs> Most rewarding part of the school. People always ask that. Helping the students. Not the money. Just, just, just helping the students like Darren. That's it. Just help them. Darren was a former student. I'm here with Darren at the Major League Barber event. Darren was a former student. Uh, tell them a little bit about yourself and what you did, Darren. Uh, I was working at a uh, dead-end job. And after 15 years, at the age of 45, I decided to make a total career path change and I signed up for Barber College. I worked a full-time job, went to school part-time. took me two years to get through it, but let me tell you something. After a month of getting my license, I quit my job. And in a matter of months, I was working full-time and I doubled my income as the bar. That was Darren. William, this was my most memorable student. Shelly. He did 30 years in prison. Uh, a Caucasian guy shot him first. And he ended up shooting back at him and killing him. And they gave him a life sentence. He ended up doing 30 years. And I established a relationship with him. He saw me on the news because back in the day, we used to advertise on the local radio and local TV. And he was the barber in prison. And when I found out his story, I would come go visit him. Every year they would shoot him down for a parole. And I went to his parole. They said, well, he doesn't have a place to stay. I said, yes, sir. He's going to stay at my halfway house. Well, he don't have no job, uh, no education. Then I said, well, ma'am, sir, the parole board I address, he's already been accepted to my barber school. Do you all know they granted him parole? I picked him up from the prison myself. I said, well, William, what do you want? What do you want to eat? Do you know what he said he wanted to eat, Kim G, to Kenya, uh, Clifton, uh, grinding by faith, Candace? He said, man, I want to go to one of them Chinese buffets. I used to see them on TV. I took him to a Chinese buffet. This is somebody that been in prison for 30 years. And I mean, it was a sight to see. And then after we left there, I took him to the mall and took him shopping and bought him shoes and clothes and underwear and socks. And then we went to Walmart and I got the deodorant, the toothpaste, just the necessities that we wouldn't even think of. And this man, he just, he boo cried. I mean, it, it's getting me kind of emotional uh, right now as we are talking. Um, I'm kind of well enough. I mean, it just touched me and it touched him too. Um, and that's William me. And today, William, he's married. He's bought, he's got two Cadillacs now, y'all, a truck. He got his own shop. I got to let y'all hear from William. All right. All right. I got William came by today. Uh, one of the best students, my top student ever at the school. So, William, you can say hi and tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I've truly been blessed. A young man has helped me in so many ways. I just, I, I don't have words for it. I just can't say 
he made me a better person than what I used to be. And I'm trying to be much better and treat people right and do the right thing. And God's been good. More power to everybody. God is good. Okay. Thank you so much for doing whatever you've done for me. Um, now, you still cutting hair. What are you doing? I'm still cutting hair up in East Tennessee. I got my own shop. I'm uh, doing extremely well. I'm not asking anybody for anything. Just working and trying to keep myself out of trouble. All right. Uh, thank you, William. Then I'm going to go outside in a little bit. That was William Me. I told y'all his story. Uh, I got um, William came. That was one of the best things of the school. I mean, I don't have to show y'all really anything else. I mean, that we're going to go into the teaching. That's Miss Velma. As you all can see, the timeline of over 20-something years from when I was a kid. I mean, right here, she was like 40-something years old. And it's crazy how I was a kid here. And in this picture... I'm like her age right here. I'm in, I'm like 42 or 43 when I retired or whatever. But that's God. And we got to continue to learn. Like Niv has talked about, I continue to invest in myself. These guys are doing 100,000 a month, 500. When I'm doing them, 2 million a month. They're internet guys. So I, I had to continue to learn about marketing. I don't drink. I told them don't pour me that wine, that $10,000 wine or whatever they got. They're going to waste it. My glass is still full because I don't drink, but I'm sharing this because we got to continue to invest in ourselves to elevate, always invest in yourself to go to the next level. So I'm continually learning this internet stuff, the Facebook ads, Instagram ads, but I definitely wanted to share that. Have Paul Mitchell's charging, now is 1.6 million for their program, which is quite a bit, but you know, you're going to make a, a lot. I mean, our program is not that, um, Y'all need to fill out the application because I'm going to be calling y'all back. But what we're going to do, we're going to take our break. We're going to take a 30-minute break. That's what we're going to do. And then when we come back, y'all better get y'all's pen and paper out. When we come back from this 30-minute break, 